Hey there team, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane, and in this video I'm going to document an adventure that I'm about to have. I want to see if I can do 3D modelling on a £35 computer. So we're looking at the Raspberry Pi essentially. Can I get 3D modelling to happen on that, on a computer that cheap and that small? Uh, and that lacking in power. Why do I want to do this? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First of all, I was about to start recording a tutorial and my graphics card died, so I've had to box that up and send it back to the place that I bought it from. Uh, and that also led me on to think, like, I've got a lot of students of mine that are having an issue with technology given the current state of the world. It's hard to replace it. So that got me thinking, what can we get away with? So the first thing I'm going to need to do is get my hands on a Raspberry Pi. And again, given the current pandemic, I don't know how long it's going to take to get my hands on one of those. So let's just start with getting what I need and then we'll see from there whether or not it's possible to install some 3D software on there and get some modeling done. So let's have a look at where I'm gonna buy my Pi from. Here's the website then, let's get one bought. So you can see on the front page, this is the latest model, the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. I'm not really gonna to think too hard about this, I'm just gonna click on shop now. Let's get one of these bought. There are two options. Uh, I can go down the two gig route or the four gig route. I want to do this uh, cheaply, so I could pay the £54 for 2 gigabytes more of RAM, but I'm hoping I can do it for just £34, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to add that to my cart. Hey, there we go. Right, I'm going to need uh, some other things, so I'll need an SD card, uh, which I already have, so I'm not going to buy one of those, that keeps it cheap. I'm going to need a micro HDMI cable. What else will I need? Keyboard and mouse. I'll also need a keyboard and mouse. I have a keyboard and mouse. I've got both Bluetooth and wired, so I will be able to do that. I've got monitors. I've also got a USB-C power supply. That's what my phone takes, so I should have everything I need. So I should be able to spend a very small amount on this project. Let's just um, have a look what they're selling HDMI cables for. So I can get an adapter. So it might be that for £2.50. I'm pretty sure that I've got a HDMI cable lying around, so we're going to have a look at just the adapter. Yep, yeah, that looks good to me, so that's going to keep the price of this project down, so we'll add that to the cart as well. Okay, so we're keeping this so far at a fairly reasonable price. Okay, and I think that is all I'm going to need to get going. So, there we are, that is my order confirmed. It's the 27th of April today, so let's see how long that takes to arrive. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the first part of the adventure underway. All I need to do now is wait. So I will see you guys in hopefully just a few days and then we can start to move this project on a little bit. So, um, see you in a few days and also in a sec. And there we go. That was like the blink of an eye for you. And for me, it was quite quick as well. So I ordered this on the 27th. It's now the 30th. So three days they've managed to get this out to me in the global pandemic so well done to uh, Pi Hut and also well done to the delivery companies that are keeping things moving in this very difficult time. Right let's um, get this open and see what's in the box. Oh, what's in the box? So here's the box that it was shipped to me in. Sounds a little bit um, loose in there. Get it open with the keys classic and let's see why it was so rattly. Uh, lots of space. So there's the Raspberry Pi 4, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and there is the mini HDMI adapter. So here's me opening it. At this stage, I still thought I'd bought the right adapter, but I have since realized that I needed the micro HDMI adapter. So that was a waste of money. Uh, next, we'll get the Raspberry Pi itself open. Nice, simple box, uh, keeping the price down, which is really good. Here's the unit itself. Let's get that beauty out of the box. On the back there is where you stick your SD card which will run the OS from. You can see you've got USB 3, USB 2, Ethernet and there are some other ports on the bottom as well. HDMI, uh, headphone jack. Here's my SD card. I'll need that for my operating system and all the software. Charger. This is what I'm going to use to get it powered. This is just one that I bought um, as a travel charger for my phone. USB-C cable I will need and my micro HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. That's everything we need. Brilliant. 
Right, now we've got that, the next thing I'll need to do is get hold of the software I'll need. So the first thing I'll do is download the Raspberry Pi imager for Windows. This is what I need to do to put the software on the SD card. And then I'm going to download Raspbian. This is the operating system designed to run on the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to get the one that is the desktop and recommended software that's just got everything that I should need. And I'll download the zip file for that. Now that I've got everything, what I'm going to do is plug in my SD card. There you can see it just popped up on my computer there. Now I need to open the Raspberry Pi imager. So this is how I'm going to get the software on the SD card. So I need to choose the OS I want to use. There are lots that I could have downloaded from within this, but I've already downloaded it separately. So I'm going to choose that from my desktop. There we go. Then I need to choose my SD card. It's the one that is 128 gigabytes. So I'm going to choose that. And then I've just got to click on write. So we'll let that um, write. This actually went a lot slower than this, but I've sped it up because, you know, who's got time to watch things go in real time. Now that that's done, I've put it into the Raspberry Pi, plugged everything in, powered it on, and this is the desktop it boots into. So everything's going to look a little bit jerky because you cannot get a game capture device anywhere. So I'm having to stream this via VNC. So the frame rate is not as good as I was actually experiencing. So the first thing I'll do is see what graphics applications we've got. Just the image viewer, that's no good. So let's go into preferences and add or remove software. So normally, if I'm doing 3D modeling, I would use Maya. But Maya is not going to be available for this because it's running Linux and it's running uh, on an ARM architecture and uh, Maya runs on x86 or x x64 one or the other it likes windows and mac os anyway so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to run blender which hopefully will work on this it seems to work on everything else so i'll just search for blender and we'll just wait a sec for it to query the packages and there we go it is showing that blender's there it's 2.79 which is not quite the latest version but I think for this experiment, it should work. So once I'm happy that I've got those two packages ready, I can just click on apply and they will install. And again, I've sped it up. It only took about a minute, um, but we don't want to sit through a minute's worth of me downloading stuff. So now that's done, we can close the add remove software, go to the start menu into graphics. And would you look at that? We've got a blender. Okay, let's try and open it. So it takes a little while because we're starting from the SD card, but you can see, there we go, make it full screen. We've now got Blender installed. That is pretty good. My next problem was that I don't actually have any idea how to use Blender. So I did what most people do that have found my channel. I went out to YouTube and I searched for a tutorial. And the one that I found that I like the look of was this Modeling for Absolute Beginners Blender tutorial by Surfaced Studio. So I opened it up, skipped the ad. Sorry, dude, I didn't want to skip the ad, but, you know, time is money. And I had a flick through, and it looked like it was going to be just what I needed to prove whether or not I could do 3D modeling on a Raspberry Pi. So that's what I chose to use. I will leave a link to this tutorial that I followed in the description of this video if you want to check it out for yourself. And I'll say thank you to Surface Studio for being the person that introduced me to Blender. It was much like um, a good penis in that it wasn't too long and it was smooth and painless. So thank you for that. Right, moving on. So here you can see me following this tutorial. So I went wrong a lot of times. It was really difficult to get used to using um, the controls in Blender after coming from Maya. But I did persevere with it. I had to undo lots of things because I kept pressing the wrong button. But you can see it does come together. I've got bevels in here, extrusions. I've added edge loops. I've used a cube. I've used a cylinder. Everything just works out pretty nicely. You've even got ways of cutting the geometry so that you can sort out any end gons, which is nice. And... Just as I'm coming in to finish this, you'll see that I create a lid for my uh, chest. And as I put that on top, I can even render it using cycles. 
So I'm not going to lie, the rendering's not quick, and there are no materials on this, and there are only a couple of lights. But it does get there, and it does look pretty nice. So I think the answer to my question, can I do 3D modelling on a Raspberry Pi, is looking like a yes so far. Okay, so wow, there you have it. It turns out that you can do 3D modelling on a Raspberry Pi. I honestly had no idea whether or not this would be feasible when I started, when I ordered the Pi, uh, but I've been surprised, pleasantly so, and it's been quite a fun little project. I've even had a little play around with Blender, which um, was also an experience. Anyway, this has been really cool, so here's what I'm going to say. If this video gets to 100,000 views this year, within 2020, I'm going to give one of these away. Possibly this one. If I decide to keep this one, I'll just buy another one. But as soon as this video gets to 100,000 views, I'm going to be sending one of these out. It'll be a separate video, one all on its own. So make sure you subscribe to see if and when that happens. But if you want to get your hands on one of these, the easiest way is to watch the video, share it with a few people, make sure you're subscribed. And hopefully, um, when we do the giveaway, you'll get one. Um, if the video does really well, I might even give away more than one. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of this video. It's been fun to do something different. Different operating system, different hardware, different modeling software. And, you know, got a little bit scared at times. But I got through it, and that's what matters. And you guys were there to help get me through with your support, even though you didn't know I was doing it. Thanks for that. Anyways, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you to all my super duper patrons. The support from you guys is amazing. Keep it up. And I hope to see you beautiful people in another video when my broken graphics card comes back and I can start getting onto tutorials again. Okay, see you there.